Some people think that I make apocalypse jokes like there's no tomorrow, but I'm sure that Michael Stipe feels fine about it. Hey, this is JT, and welcome to G-Club. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button to see other board game related content, such as the interview that I did with John Lundgren of Fallen Dominion Studios, who's also the co-designer of today's game that I'll be reviewing. So in our views, we get into the best moment of the game, talk about whether we like it, get into the pros and cons, and give you some comparisons and conclusions. Without further ado, let's get into the best moment of Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. When your opponent is about to win the game, do the rewards of a mission, and you sneak in that saboteur that wipes out all of the rewards, that's got to be the best moment of the game. Isn't that right, Nat? In Fallen Land, you are a leader of survivors that have formed a faction vying for supremacy over the other towns in this new world. You will form a party of survivors that will explore the post-apocalypse aftermath of the United States. You will equip your party with weapons, medicine, special items, and even vehicles ready for battle. You will gain supremacy in prestige or town health by completing missions, capturing and maintaining resources, and from certain town events. There will be opportunities to interact with other faction leaders in auctions, actions, and attacks. In auctions, players will make offers to other players for their unwanted items. Through action cards, players can cause successful skill checks to be re-rolled, or even items to be destroyed. Then there are just good old-fashioned player versus player attacks, where the winner goes the spoils. As you claim resources, gain technologies, and grow your town, your faction will become stronger. If your leadership is well known throughout the Fallen Land by gaining at least 20 prestige, or your faction has grown in size and strength to 80 town health, then you will win Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. So when your buddy Matt has been taunting you all game and pulls off an epic roll to defeat a major mission and you send in a saboteur card to wipe it out, that's got to be the best moment of the game. Isn't that right, Matt? So that was the best moment of the game, but did I like it? Yes, I really like this game. I'm not really much on ratings, but if I was to give a rating of this game, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10. So, let me get into the details of the reasons why in The Balancing Act. So let's start off with the rule book. The rule book is fantastic, has plenty of examples, and does just an excellent job at explaining the rules. Everything is clarified with a bunch of examples. However, that rule book is thick and can be intimidating to new players. There is such an immersive theme and storytelling throughout this game that just makes you want to explore more. I think one thing that you use a facelift is the box art. I really want that box art to happen to pop for people to really invite them in uh, so I can get more people to play this game. Now, you are getting a ton of content in this game. There's hundreds of cards and chits and all kinds of stuff in this game. Uh, the stories, the, uh, the interaction, the characters that are in there, the vehicles, the items. Um, I mean, just everything about this game is just dripping with theme and there is a ton of it. Now, as a family-friendly channel, I do want to make sure that my viewers understand that with this post-apocalyptic theme and all this content does come with mature content. So this may be a pro or con depending on whether or not you like cutthroat player interaction. But I'll tell you what, if you want more player interaction that is cutthroat, add in the expansion. Alright, fair warning on this one. It is a table hog, okay? If you have a small table, do not apply or get a bunch of TV trays to be able to hold the stacks of cards and other chits and things outside of your table. If you love Easter eggs in your games, well, <laughs> go no further than the Fallen Land of post-apocalyptic board games. There are a ton of Easter eggs in this thing. Parodies of different characters, as well as vehicles, items, all that fun stuff. Now with those Easter eggs, they really kind of appeal more towards an older generation. Um, those that would probably reference some pop cultures from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, so younger generations may not pick up on all these little Easter eggs, but uh, I gotta say, 
I love it. So another thing with this game is the game length. It's going to be about an hour per player, so I don't know if I would probably go more than four players uh, unless I had an entire day dedicated to playing this game, or you kind of lower the thresholds on, um, on, on the win conditions. So at the same time, I would say three is probably the sweet spot, with two feeling a little bit more like two solo games that are happening, which might be appealing to certain groups, uh, but I would say that three is definitely in the sweet spot. It feels like there's enough of the board to kind of grow, but there's enough players to be able to continue on with that interaction. Okay, I want to explore the theme and the storylines within this game. I want to get into Scooby-Doo's Mystery Machine, uh, drive around, and take on all that the apocalyptic wasteland, or the fallen land in this case, has to offer. Wearing Jason Voorhees hockey mask while using Conan the Barbarian sword. Now the theme is great, but the game is not without its hiccups. And I, and I hate to bring this up because I know that, that these are such um, subjective things when it comes to things like art. The art and the graphic design are serviceable. I don't have any problems understanding the icon iconography. I don't have any problems understanding the board. Everything works really well and from a play standpoint, I know exactly what I need to do and I know exactly how the cards interact with each other. With that said though, what, what I think could hold this game back um, from getting a much broader reaction or more acceptance from it is that graphic design and the art. And the reason why I bring that up is because those of you that are looking at home and you're looking at some of the art graphic design, maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't, but if it doesn't, I don't want you to be scared off from this game simply from that. Um, I have been more immersed in the theme and the story of what's going on that those things really don't even matter at that point um, to me. And so I, I bring that up because I just want to make sure that you know that I recognize that and that was something that kind of kept me from going, I don't know if I really want to get into this game or not, but I tell you what, I got over it right away as soon as we got into the game. Now look, I mentioned before that this book is thick, right? Uh, it's like 40 pages, but I tell you what though, it's so well written. Um, as somebody who has a tech writing background, I've really appreciated the level of effort and the level of details that's been put into this rule book. And once you get through basically one round, you hardly even need to reference it because everything makes so much sense. And in the times we had to reference, there's a great index that tells us where to find everything, go back, find it. And what's been fantastic is the reason why, part of the reason why the rule book is so long and what's fantastic about it is the amount of examples that are in there. And so if you look at it and go, is that really how that works out? And then they give you a really good example and you go, oh, that's exactly how that works out because the example tells you, you know, this is exactly how it plays. So if you're into sandbox style games like Western Legends or post-apocalyptic themed games like Wasteland Express, or you like RPGs such as Final Fantasy where you're taking a party of people, leveling them up, getting them items, sending them on missions, and you think 80s and 90s pop culture references sound fantastic, then go out into the wasteland and hunt this game down. You will not be disappointed. And so what if I don't know what apocalyptic means? It's not like it's the end of the world. But would it really be the end of the world if you clicked on one of these videos? Not really. And if you want to check out that interview that I did with John Lundgren from Fallen Dominion Studios, then click on this video right here. No, no, really. Like, this, that, that one. Yes.